We've planned the pages, we've sketched them out, and now it's time to put pen to paper in my new bullet journal. For this one, I'm going with a traveler's size notebook, which is a first for me, but let's get into it. Starting not on the first page, but actually in the inside cover, we're going to be making a flip out. This effectively just involves taking a scrap piece of paper or more likely an off cut from my journal and turning this into a little door that can flip out to the side of my notebook. I'm going to be using this for my monthly and weekly reset processes, which are effectively just a sequence of steps that I try to do at the end of each week or each month to get myself prepared for the period of time coming. So whether that be like the week ahead or the month ahead. I did set up a summary page of this in my current everyday journal, but I actually really missed having them as flip outs. I find the flip outs really helpful because you can view the flip out regardless of what page in the notebook you're in. So for instance, if I'm working on like my daily log or my weekly log and I'm putting my brain dump in there as part of the reset process, I can have the reset steps visible without having to flip back to the start of my journal to look at that summary page. It's just a little bit more user friendly. If you were curious on flip outs and how they can be made or used for your journal, then I do have a separate video on that one. That one's linked in the description box below. I also do have videos on the weekly and monthly resets, but as said, that one's in the description along with any other video related to this one. To stick in my flip out, I have just used some double sided tape and I've made sure to stick it really close to the edge of my notebook so that I can fully see all of the steps on that reset because some of them come quite close to the fold. This is in part because I didn't use a full piece of paper to make the reset, I just used an off cut and kind of just prayed that it would fit. Thankfully it did fit all the steps, but it probably would have been smarter to pre-plan how much space I was going to need in terms of the little tip-in that I'm making. Now, I know that some people can just go in pen first and write their name into their journal, and I am not one of those people. Heck yes, I penciled my name in first. Not so much because I thought I'd forget how to spell my name, though never say never, but more so that this is the very first page of my journal, I want it to look nice, even if it is just writing my name. If you're going to pencil first, do make sure that your pen is 100% dry before doing any erasing, because we all know what happens if you don't. Flipping over though and getting into the first actual page of the notebook, or the first dot grid page, I'm going to be putting in a year at a glance. I know some people don't find a year at a glance particularly helpful, especially if they put many calendars on their future log, but what I'm mainly going to use it for is the week numbers. These week numbers are used for an annual tracker that I have called my habit builder, where I have the numbers 1 through 52 written out for each of the weekly habits that I'm trying to build. I can then signify that I've done that habit in that week by making sure that I'm referencing the correct week number. So having a year at a glance with the week numbers just helps me keep track of which number corresponds to which week of the year. Hopefully that makes sense. Normally when I do a year at a glance, I would fit a full calendar on one page. Well, when I'm working in an A5, I would. So moving to the travelers is certainly different in that respect. In terms of the dimensions of the travelers pages, we have nine and a half centimeters across or 19 boxes and 19 centimeters down or 38 dot grid boxes. So while the page is the same length as my typical A5, it is significantly narrower. It's actually more narrow than the B6 journal that I used last year, which was 11 centimeters across. I did love that smaller size though, so I am interested to see how I go with this notebook. For the decoration on my layouts today, I'm going to be using what looks like stickers, but is actually washi tape. This one's from the washi tape shop, and it is absolutely gorgeous. They made the decoration in this setup super simple which I did very much appreciate. A link to that tape along with any other supplies I've used in the setup is in the description box, along with discount codes for any of the applicable ones. For instance, if you want to save yourself some money at the washi tape shop, you can use my code JASHY10 for 10% off. We love savings. Decoration done though, and it's time to move on to our first full spread in the notebook. And on this one, I'm going to be putting my future log. One of the reasons that people typically don't feel a year at a glance is necessary is because they put mini calendars on their future log, like we mentioned before. But because I've already got the mini calendars, I'm not going to include them here. Also, given the fact that I'm using the traveler size and I want to put some decoration on this page, I didn't want to use up real estate putting in mini calendars. Though I have seen some very cute future log styles in a travelers that include mini calendars. It's just not what I'm going with today. In terms of the life of this journal, I'm planning on using it from June to August. So you may think, 
why are you starting the future log in July? This is really about duplicate information because I'm not gonna be moving into this journal until June and I'll already have a monthly setup done for June. I don't see the point of having a space for June in the future log because then I just end up writing all of those dates, events in the future log and then doing the exact same things on the monthly calendar for June, which will already be set up. What would be more important for me is having a space to write out what's happening in July and beyond, because those months won't be set up in the journal when I initially move into it. I just don't like the idea of having to record information twice. We're busy people, we have other things to do. In terms of the setup in general though, we do have six sections on the page. So five for the months of July through to November, and then one for any future, future events. I don't really expect to have very many of those, but it's nice to have the space there just in case. I'd love to know though, how often do you actually use your future log? I'm typically pretty good with the initial setup, but then I don't really come back to check it all that often, unless I'm being super intentional about it as part of my weekly reset. Normally instead, I just opt to add things into a digital calendar in Outlook. As said though, we are including a few decorative elements on this future log, and I opted in for some smaller decoration to maximize the amount of space that I could use to write in those future events. Again, those ones just come from the washi tape that I'm using for the entire setup. Originally, I was planning on putting my goal pages next, and this would be pretty typical for me. I like to have my goal pages quite close to the start of my journal, just so that they're easy to access. But this year I'm doing my goal setting quarterly, which means that any goal pages I'd be putting into my journal now uh, for the period of April through to the end of June, but given that June is the first month in the journal, and then we'll be on to quarter three, it felt a little bit strange to have like a whole bunch of startled journal real estate dedicated to information that I was, in theory, only going to be using for one month before doing a goals review and setting up new goal pages. For that reason, after the future log, we're actually moving on to my 101 things list. If you haven't come across it before, a 101 things list is just 101 things that you want to get done in a certain period of time. For me, that is the year of 2023. So 101 things that I want to achieve or try or accomplish this year. In this journal, I am not going to be writing out the full list. This is just for assigning particular things to particular months. Because I'm only planning to have three months in this journal, it would be a little bit of a waste of time, I guess, to write out all 101 things in this journal. So instead what I'm doing is I have spaces mapped out for each of those months, and then also the one that follows for future planning, to record which of my 101 things I want to work on. One of my 101 things is actually to try a traveler sized notebook for my everyday journal, so I will be able to check that one off when we come into June. In general, I just want to try other sized journals to explore new layout styles. I find that if you give yourself a different amount of space to work with, it kind of helps to unlock a bit of your creativity because you're not doing the same old, same old. This was a similar idea with trying the B5 and the B6 last year, rather than my typical A5 size. For this year, we had an A5 to start the year off. We're now going with a Traveler's, and then at the end of the year, I'm gonna be trying a square notebook. You'll have seen it at the start of the video, but the notebook that I'm going with is a kind of burnt orange color. This one comes from Archer and Olive, and I specifically picked this notebook because it was not blue. My last four journals that I've set up have been blue, so I don't want any more blue Joes. I wanted to go with something different. As said, the one I've gone with is from Archer and Olive, and while they don't have this specific one available still, they do have a lovely range of other Traveler's Notebook sized journals, just if you wanted to grab one for yourself. Remember, again, we have the code JASHIKARIN10 that you can use for 10% off your order, because we love savings. Onto the other side of this spread though, and we're setting up a self-care bingo page. Now, most people tend to do these ones monthly, but I always find it's kind of like too many things for just one month. Like, if I want to pick meaningful things to do that really promote my self-care, doing all of those in one month is going to be tricky. So instead, I've decided to have a bingo board for the entire life of the journal, so three months. I've also decided that I'm actually going to be giving myself rewards for completing the bingo board. So the first diagonal, the first horizontal, the first vertical, and then the full board. Typically, I wouldn't do this because I would kind of view the self-care activities as rewards themselves, which I don't think is necessarily a very good mindset for me to have. I want to make the self-care tasks not necessarily immediately rewarding, so I'm going to pick some rewards out to kind of treat myself as I complete those things. 
even though it's over three months, I have just opted in to do a three by three bingo board rather than anything bigger. So that's gonna be nine meaningful self-care tasks that I'm doing for myself in that period of time, possibly roughly three a month. We'll see how it goes. Flipping on over though, and the next spread is more work related, though it's also kind of fun. And that is a page each for tracking my AOP and Friday fun posts. Starting with AOP, so A-Y-O-P, and if you're like, Jess, what the heck are you talking about? AOP stands for A Year of Planning. This is a planning or journal challenge that I'm running for the year. This one has weekly prompts, so you either make or show off a layout in your journal related to the prompt for that week. And I do have a full explanation video for that one about how you can get involved if you want to. That one's in the description box as well. The purpose of this page though is to track my post making for the challenge. I want to keep track of having the picture of the prompt for each week, having written the description for the post, you know, like the body of text that you have on an Instagram post or whatever, and then having posted it in all of the places that we posted. So we do have a dedicated Facebook group for the challenge. We also run it on Instagram, and I also now post it over in our Discord server. It's been a lot of fun seeing how people respond to the prompts, because obviously every Everybody's style is different and they may interpret the prompts differently as well. The caption that I have with each of the prompts offers a little bit more information about what my kind of intention behind the prompt was, but it is still very much open to interpretation. This layout is set up like an Alistair method though, so I can just keep track of having done each of those tasks for each of the different posts. And I've also specified when they get posted down the left hand side, just to keep myself on track. Now as we have the decoration done on that one, we can move on to the right hand side of this spread, which is for the Friday fun posts. These are the ones that I do over in the community tab on our YouTube channel, but I also post them on Instagram and in our Facebook group, because yay for posting in all of the places. But the tracking on this one is very similar again. So having made the picture, having written the text and posted in all of the places, but I also need to keep track of coming up with ideas. While the A Year of Planning challenge has been planned in advance, so that one's got all of its prompts kind of sorted for the whole year, this one is more of a kind of build the plane as we fly it type thing, but it is really just a bit of fun. You might have seen some of them, but some of the previous ones we've had are things like, if you could only pick three supplies, what are you gonna use for your journal setup? Or a kind of black pen showdown, who will win type thing. Just some kind of fun head to head type posts or little polls. If you have any suggestions for ones that we could do in the future, let me know in the comments, because I do find myself trying to think of a new one every single week. I don't really have a pool of ideas for this type of post, but I have been enjoying it so far. Over the page though, and we are setting up a new spread. Now, in the bullet journal method book, Ryder Carol specifically calls out lists of TV shows and movies as why are you recording this, or how is it adding value? First of all, low-key check yourself writer because this is my journal and I can record what I want. <laughs> but on a less aggressive note, it's also the idea of value added, like it brings me joy. And I think that that is plenty fine of a reason to include a media consumed or media to consume page. Sure, it's like not super necessary, but I like keeping track of it. I like being able to look back and see what kind of things I was watching or reading or listening to during the life of my journals. So flicking back to my 2017 journal and seeing what I was getting into then. This one is going to be used as a combination of a recommendations slash check this out layout. So a record of what I actually consume versus what I want to consume. At the end of this journal, recommendations that did not get consumed will get transferred into my long term collections journal rather than the next everyday bullet journal. This kind of saves me having to rewrite and rewrite and rewrite entries with each new journal, because oftentimes it takes me quite a while to watch or listen to or read recommendations that I get. This one's super simple though, we just have a column down the left hand side of both pages to check off when that thing has been consumed, and then a space to write out the title of that piece of media. While in my previous journal I set it up more as an Alistair method, so I could show what type of media each of the entries was. So is it a movie or a book or a TV show, so on and so forth. But in this one, because we have less horizontal real estate, because we're in the traveler's size, I've decided that if it needs specifying, like for instance, if I read a book that also has a movie or vice versa, I'll just put in brackets at the end of the entry, book 
or movie or TV show or whatever I need. On to the next spread and we're bringing back some things that I haven't had in my journal for a while and that is a savings tracker and also a bills tracker. Historically I've not been too bad at saving but since going full time with content creating I do have less income to set aside for savings so I haven't been as intentional with it as I have been previously. I kind of want to get back to a more regular habit of contributing to my savings just so that I can build my financial health in general. I do need to specify a savings goal before I do too much on this page, but I do think I have a number in mind. I've decided that I'm going to make it a goal for a certain amount in my savings account rather than a certain amount saved. So rather than, you know, like save $500 or whatnot, it's more like build my savings amount or the amount in my savings account up to $500. That's not my actual amount, but that's the difference point we're working with here. Towards the top of the page, we're having a graph section so I can kind of track on a weekly basis where is my savings amount sitting at. And hopefully over the period that we're tracking, over the life of this journal, we will actually see growth in my savings account. That would be nice. Down the bottom, I've got a table to record this information as well. It has two columns, one for the amount saved each week, so I can see on that week specifically how much did I contribute, and then on the the other side we have a space to record the running total in the savings account. So that's going to be the same information that's tracked in the graph just with the actual numbers because the graph is more like a visual representation where if I want to know the specific like dollar amount that was in the account I can look in the table at the bottom. While I haven't specifically decided on what my goal is yet I do need to make sure that I'm keeping it realistic. I only have three months in this journal so we have to make sure we pick an amount that is gonna kind of push me to save a bit more but isn't so completely unrealistic that it is 100% not gonna happen. On the right hand side of the spread though this is where my bills tracker is going to go because recently I realized that I have little to no idea of which bills hit us when which can kind of lead to some less than ideal surprises regarding what our funds have to go towards. Effectively, I'm setting this one up as a log of either bills that I know are coming up or ones that pop up without my prior knowledge. I'm hoping that I can use this as a reference in the future, for instance, this time in subsequent years in particular, so I know what type of bills to expect when and plan my money slash budget better or accordingly. The layout of this one is fairly simple though, we just have four sections, so one for each of the months that the journal is going to hold and then one for an every month category. So bills that pop up every month so I don't need to record them over and over again. Things like our internet bill or our power bill or our media subscriptions. That kind of stuff. When I was planning out this new journal setup, I was very intentional with picking layouts that are going to help promote my work towards my goals. And one of my goals is to get better at my household contributions, or like, I don't know what you'd call chores for kids. I don't like to call them chores for myself because I feel like it just puts me in a negative mindset. Also, I am a member of this household and I need to do my fair share, so I'm not going to call them chores. But anywho, a less than fun layout. It is a housework tracker for all of the things that I want to do around the house. This one again is set up with an Alistair style method at the top part, where I can keep track of the things that I want to do on a weekly basis around the house. Because this journal is only probably going to last about 14 weeks, that does leave a fair bit of the page unused, so I've decided that at the bottom I'm going to record anything else that I do around the house that isn't one of my typical jobs. I so almost called them chores and I'm not using the word chores. As I said, I'm not very good at doing housework, so I wanted to have a space that very clearly outlines what I'm expected to do. My partner Vogel, he is a very good egg, he does a lot around the house, and I want to make sure that I'm doing my share, pulling my weight. On the right hand side of this layout, this is where I'm putting a projects list, and this one is very much just a list, it has a very basic structure. I'm putting this one beside the housework tracker because the intention is mainly to use it for household projects, but I am keeping the title vague just in case I want to expand on that. Eventually I'm hoping to make a space in my long term collections journal for household projects, but I'm not too sure how many projects I'm actually going to want to record, so I'm kind of using this layout as a starting off point, just to see how much space I'd reasonably need to dedicate to such a layout, or see how much use it gets in general. I've been really getting into project planning and breaking down the steps needing to get to a specific outcome. I will totally have a video on that, so do stay tuned. 
Decoration finished and flipping on over, this next layout is one that is kind of a staple in my everyday journal setups. But this is a My Next Bujo page, or Nujo Planning page. This is a dedicated space where I can write down ideas for my next journal setup. I find this really useful because while I'm using a journal, I'll be having these little thoughts about like, oh, in my next journal, it'd be really cool to have this layout at the front. Or, oh, in this journal, I really enjoyed doing this, but this didn't work so well, and I want to make sure to remember that. Having this dedicated place to write those things down means that when I come to plan my next journal, I actually have all of those notes that I can apply to the setup. Very useful. As you can see, the right hand page has a bunch of little drawn out thumbnails where I can sketch out what I want my layouts to look like. And as I said, my next next journal is going to be a square. So I made sure to make these thumbnails actually kind of represent that. The left hand page though is just separated into two list sections. So one for just general notes and then the bottom one to actually write out what pages I'm going to want to include in that next journal. You'll have seen that we already had the decoration on this one sorted because I was testing out to see if I actually liked the idea. Obviously I did because I kept it in. So with this spread done, it's time to flip on over to what I call my month set up planning spaces. When I go to set up for a new month, I like to have a space to plan out what I want to include and also what decoration I want to use. So this is the place to capture the ideas for those upcoming monthly setups, whether they be decorative or things related to layouts. I just find it really helpful to pre-plan my layouts in this way so I can tackle them in a more focused way, which not only saves me time, but also means that I'm not forgetting to include helpful things. The spread is just split into four sections, so two on each of the spreads, and each of those sections is dedicated to one of the months. So June, July, August, and September. Because even though September's not in this journal, it's good to plan ahead. Each of those has some little boxes to color in with my color palette for the month. It has a place to describe what kind of aesthetic elements I'm using, or kind of the vibe, I guess, that I'm going for in the setup. And also a place to list out what spreads I want to include, which is usually one of the most important parts. In terms of writing and what theme I'm actually going with, I just write this beside the header for the month. So June, colon, and then I'll fill in what theme I actually end up going with. It isn't strictly necessary to have in your bullet journal, you could just do this on scrap paper, but I find it quite useful to have a place in my journal to capture the ideas. It's gonna be interesting to see how using this new size of journal goes, and I'm curious to get into more layouts with it. I think one layout style in particular that I'm the most nervous for is probably the monthly log, because I usually like to use a calendar view, and now as we have much less horizontal space, I'm either going to have to have one that's quite small or start thinking creatively. I do love how the washi tape in this setup made the decoration so, so much easier. Remember that everything that I've used is linked in the description box along with any other related videos. And if you wanted to see examples of layouts that you can set up in a traveler size notebook, then I do recommend checking out the video we have on screen here, which has 30 different traveler size layouts. Or if you're on the hunt for new journal setup ideas, the playlist at the bottom is for you. Click or tap on either of those and I'll see you over there.